I'm Gwen Rudy. I'm an astronomer at Carnegie Observatories, and my husband's also an astronomer. It's really convenient and really awesome to be married to another astronomer. We work really hard thinking about concepts that a lot of people don't think about that often. And so being able to share that with someone else is both really fun and it's also really useful. If I'm really puzzled about something or Drew's really puzzled about something, we'll talk about it. If we need a new strategy for a way to come up with some new observations or something, we'll brainstorm together. So I really started loving astronomy because I loved math and I also really loved physics. When I was looking around at sort of the types of physics that you can study, I thought that some of the most interesting open questions that existed in physics were actually astronomy questions. I'm an observational astronomer. The galaxies that I'm interested in studying are extremely distant. And so even though they are intrinsically very, very bright, by the time the light reaches us, it's incredibly faint. And so I need the largest telescopes that we have on the planet in order to be able to study these really distant, tiny little specks. One of my favorite parts of my job, absolutely, is observing the sky through these giant telescopes. I'm interested in understanding how galaxies like the Milky Way, the galaxy that we live in, formed and evolved. It's really a great privilege to be able to use these giant telescopes. I always think of the photons, the light that hits our telescopes as being sort of the lucky photons. They've been traveling to us in many cases for 10 billion years, and they hit one of our mirrors, get caught in our instruments. Being the person that gets to do that, gets to see the product of that light for the very first time, is really a great honor. It's one of the wonderful privileges of being a professional astronomer. It's really hard because most things in astronomy change over time scales that are measured in billions of years. So we can't actually watch things change. Going all the way back in time to some of the earliest times that we can observe the universe and understanding what processes really governed that, it really helps us to tell our origin story you'll see these tiny little specks that look like nothing to most people. But I can look at those and I can say, oh, that's really interesting. That's a galaxy that contains a bunch of oxygen. And because it has so much oxygen, that means it's been forming stars. The entire field of astronomy is kind of like a giant puzzle. And we don't really know yet even what all the pieces are, where the pieces might be. And what I hope is that the work that I do manages to sort of find and uncover a handful of these pieces that we can put together into the larger puzzle to really understand both the cosmos in general and also our place in it.